Okay, folks, so we are in the southeast of Iceland. If you saw my recent video, How I Make Money as a Photographer, I talked about coming back to Iceland to finish off setting up a tour, a couple of different projects, and finish off making a book that I've been shooting for several years now. I've been all around Iceland so many times, but I've actually never been to some of the areas we're going on this trip in the winter. So my goal is to get some different vantage points on some of the different mountains and waterfalls and sites. But the fun thing about Iceland is in half an hour, the weather can go from blue sky and, you know, great contrast to moody, soft light like we have behind us here. So the final images we get at each location, we have to be a little bit flexible on. But so far, it's been going great. I'm going to bring you along as I'm capturing some of the key shots for this book series. And for this, I'm going to be shooting with the Fuji GFX 100. I've got the 20 to 35, the 32 to 64, and the 45 to 100. This is what I love most about photography. One, being out in the field and actually shooting rather than being in studio, editing, that kind of thing. I was never a landscape guy, really. I'm all about people. But being in the field, it, there's just nothing that beats it. To be honest, the last two or three days, Ernest and I have had, let's say, a challenging time with the weather here. You know, ocean filling our boots with water, driving rain, soaking all of our clothes through. But right now, the mist, the low sun, the no wind, the no rain, making for this perfect reflection. It's just magic. And I think there's nothing that I enjoy more about photography. Forget the equipment, forget the teaching and travel and all of that stuff, is when you frame up a shot and through the viewfinder, as you're clicking in your settings, getting the adjustments to get the shot you want, you see it just come together and you know you got something really special. And that for me is when I know it's a shot that's going to end up in the book. So Vestrahorn, check definitely for this photo book I'm making. Now, because it's going to be printed, I'll get some wider than I need. I'll get some that are potentially going to be different orientations so that I have options depending on the layout that I want to use. And that sky, I mean, come on. Now, the first two things I wanted to talk about how I'm approaching shooting for print. Uh, who's your market for the book or the prints or whatever it is that you're planning to produce and sell? And secondly, do you have a defined theme for it? So in terms of who's your market, you know, is it going to be mums and dads? Is it going to be other photographers? Is it going to be people looking for adventure type photography? So thinking about one, the kind of images that are going to speak to those people, but also the kind of products that are going to work for them. It's a limited group of people who buy calendars. It's a limited group of people who buy books, maybe even a more limited group who buy big fine art prints, but then eBooks and that kind of thing have a much bigger market. Then in terms of your theme, are you doing it focused on waterfalls or nature or animals, or is it gonna be a general topic book? Now, in my case, it's going to be general, which makes it a little bit easier because this book is to support the tours that I run to Iceland. And having traveled the whole country, I want it to incorporate all different ones. I could probably do a book just on waterfalls and a book just on animals, but I think having a cross section that represents the kind of things you see on my different tours and the kind of things that I personally find interesting is the right direction for the book. And by doing it that way, then I will have, you know, if I wanted to do calendars, a calendar of waterfalls, a calendar of landscapes, a calendar of animals, but more likely I can choose out just the three or five best animals, waterfalls, landscapes, and sell them as fine art prints. I'll talk to you a bit more later in the video about filling in the gaps of what you've already shot to make a cohesive overall project. For now, that mountain range needs my attention. Oh, 
another tip on shooting to print. We're now in the far east of Iceland and having gone through my images from previous trips, I think it's really helpful to take a look at them and see if you have recurring themes that can help you to figure out what, if there is actually an overriding theme to what you're putting together, but it will help you identify gaps. So as I went through and found, okay, I have lots and lots of color, not too much black and white. I have mostly landscape oriented. I want more portrait oriented. Thinking about, you know, if you're doing a lot of long exposures, do you want a variety of the amount of movement in the shots and start to find what are the gaps that are going to bring it together and tell the cohesive theme. If you're, like I said, if you're really hardcore onto waterfalls, then you can do a whole project on waterfalls. But for me, trying to do something that's more general in nature, it will help you identify, I have too much of this, not enough of that, and cull it down to what you want to be shooting to finish off the project. Hey folks, it feels like it's about 11 o'clock at night, but it's actually 5.30 in the afternoon. We're past halfway in our trip now and the shooting process is going great. I just wanted to take a moment. I've been going through looking at the shots from this trip. Again, looking at the shots I have lined up for the book, thinking about what I'm going to put in and exactly what products I wanna make. Now I'm gonna make a future video where I go through about how I'm you know, editing and culling and all of that to lay out the the products that we're going to make. But I had a look on the Saal website. One of the things you really wanna think about uh, when you're going to be printing photo prints is your paper stock. Now, going down the slippery slope of printing can really be a can of worms if you're gonna try and do it at home. But if you're working with professionals, one of the big variables is the paper stock. I just noticed Saal actually has a sample set that I'm gonna order that has all the different paper stocks that they offer shipped out in a little metal tin so you can see exactly how the images are going to look. I think that's a fantastic idea. So I'm definitely going to check that out. Then the professional line books are the ones that I've made in the past. I always go for the one with an acrylic cover. They have the option for that leather box I showed you in the previous video. Um, so I will be making one of those. And I'm also thinking, I just saw they have uh, portfolio so it's using kind of the screw down side so you can update the images as your portfolio updates i love books but when you print a full book that's kind of it it's set in stone so you can't come back two years later take 20 images out put 20 new images in that kind of thing so actually doing something like that would be good it's funny even at the point in my career that i am now and i'm doing different kinds of work i explained all of that in the how i make my money video there's still often times where we have people around at the studio who wanna see my work and having something physical is so much nicer than just putting it up on a screen. So that could be really cool. And then they have so many different print types. So I do wanna get into selling prints. So I'm thinking I'll probably order in some of the different uh, papers, as I said, to try. But then also they have steel and all of those kind of prints as well. So I think I'll get a mix of different prints, see how I like the results, and then we can work through and figure out what's the right mix of products that's gonna go well with this project. We are currently in northeastern Iceland and it's coming up to the Christmas feast at the hotel we're staying at. So we're going off to join some raucous party tonight. So wish us luck. We have another early start tomorrow and I'll round out the rest of my tips for shooting to print once we're on the road. Okay, now as I said, when shooting for print, I always like to have uh, different compositions. So you just never know if it, it turns out that you're gonna have mountain after mountain back to back in the book, having some that are in, gonna work as a black and white, some that are gonna be a square or vertical or horizontal. It's good to have that variety there. So I'm trying to frame up a shot here that will work nicely as 
potentially a square and a portrait oriented shot. Love this location, got a bunch of different potential shots for the book. I'll do a follow-up video where I actually go through and explain to you how I edit and cull and select and lay out the photos for the book, but definitely we got some great options today. So it is 1 p.m. right now, it's minus nine Celsius, despite being in the brightest and warmest time of day. So we've pulled over here, the, all of the you know, grass and everything is completely frosted out. And because of the hard sunlight, it's glistening in the background. So we should be able to get some shots backlit with the sun that give a nice effect, nice effect. And some with direct lighting with a shallow depth of field, then those glistening areas in the background should give us some nice bokeh. Now I thought I'd just go through and give you six things that I always try to do when I'm shooting for print. This is irrespective of what camera I'm using, film or digital, whether it's for a book or for you know actual prints. First of all, keep the ISO as low as possible. We're so used to sharing online these days and you know shooting at 100 or 5,000, you can often not tell the difference when it's compressed on Instagram. Once it's printed, it is really noticeable. I know there's lots of different software that can apply noise reduction to that. I'm talking about how to try and shoot and get things as close as ready to print as possible out of camera. The second one, I'll actually skip ahead, is resolution and it ties to that last one. Everyone knows 240 to 300 DPI is, or PPI is a good spot to be for printing. And that actually you can go much lower than that if you're doing things like billboards. Just keep in mind with something like a book, people are looking at it a foot from their face so they can really see the detail. So I don't wanna be one of those, you need a 200 megapixel camera type people, but generally speaking, more resolution is your friend in the shooting process. Hence me bringing the 100 megapixel this trip. Next up is stability. Try to get everything pin sharp without movement, unless you're trying to include movement. A little bit of movement, again, you may not see it when you're sharing things digitally, but in print, you're absolutely going to see that because they're able to pixel peep it on the paper. Same level, keep things level. As soon as something's in a book and you've got the square edges of the book or the print there, if something is slightly off level, it just stands out like crazy. So make sure you bring along a good tripod that you can make sure everything's stable and level. And if you're shooting a pano, make sure the legs are level and the head is level so that as you do the movement through the panorama, it all stays level and you're not like having the legs off and then the head correcting so that as you move, the head's actually going off level later in the shots. Last two, frame wider than you think you're going to need to if you have the space to do so. So often you'll need to crop things. Not everything gets printed in the exact aspect ratio of your camera. I often print in four by fives. And if you do find that you're slightly off level as you correct that, you lose some of the edges, so frame a little bit wider. And finally, this is a personal thing, but I try not to overexpose my frames. It's personal preference if you wanna go under or over, but I tend to go under. Just keep in mind, if you blow up, blow out any part of your frame and it's printed, that's going to end up as white paper and it's really going to stand out unless it should have been white in the print. So there's six quick things. I'm freezing, let's go back to the car. So this location, Scooter Foss, is just beautiful to shoot. 
we're here before sunrise, which means there's not a big contrast in light between the waterfall, the mountains in the distance, and all of the running water. No areas are in hot spots of light, so that's really nice. But the only thing I don't love about this location is right there. There's like a some kind of pump or outlet where water's coming out of a stainless steel pipe into the, the waterfall. So I'm gonna to try to use this boulder to be a foreground object, get down low enough that I can use it to cover that and still have the waterfall and the mountain in the distance. So we are on our way back to Reykjavik, about halfway through the drive right now. It's almost midday and I think we're about to see our first direct sunlight for the whole trip. Um, it's been fantastic. I got all the shots I wanted for the book. Um, we fly out tomorrow morning and I'm off to New York and then I'll be back to Hong Kong. So I will take you through the process of culling, editing and selecting images and laying out the books and choosing what I'm going to do in terms of prints and we can go through all that together in studio. If you have any questions about Iceland or about printing in general, then leave me a comment below. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the video as much as we've enjoyed the trip.